Let's all stand together, shall we? was in Samaria and he met the woman at the well he said to her they were arguing about whether, whether we should worship from Jerusalem whether we should worship from the place where she was from and she was trying to segregate you Jews and us Samarians and they were like arguing it's very similar to what's going on if you read you see what's going on, you know. We do it this way, you do it that way, you know. But Jesus laid the, fi the one foundation. And I'm mentioning the scripture because it's good to be reminded. He says, there, there is a time, and this is now, where the Father will be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And we understand the, 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 the two qualities. That he's laid down the truth of what he likes and what he does not like. He's taken books and the whole Old Testament to describe what does God prefer, what he does not prefer. One of the things that, he, that, that God constantly refers to is our hearts. that an upright heart, he says, who may ascend this mountain? It's those who've got clean hands and a pure heart, amen? And so every time we come together, it's, it's not just for a Sunday, it's really a walk, isn't it? It's an it's a everyday walk. But the Bible also says that he who walks in the spirit does not succumb to the desires of the flesh. So we need the Holy Spirit and we need the Word of God. And for those of you who maybe are new and you're just visiting or you've not been there much, you've seen us do all the movements and the dancing and the clapping and the singing and the shouting. It's all there in the Bible. Amen. And I always tell the students that, you know, it's to find that it's to find that place in your heart where you're really excited about God and how you really feel about Jesus and you express that in worship that's really what it is if there's a deep revelation of who he is and what he's done for us just the sacrifice let's just talk about the cross never mind all the other things that he's doing for us individually if we just have a constant revelation deeper revelation of what he's done for us in the cross the fact that we can come here without any earthly requirements we can just come walk in the door nobody's got to wash hands nobody's got to take his shoes off nobody's being checked at the door and we walk in and we lift our hands and we sing to him Bible says it's our reasonable service so I want to encourage every one of us don't do it because we're doing it do it because you have a revelation of him and of his love for you dig deep this morning ask the Holy Spirit so you can worship him he says you must worship God not you if you like to if you feel to every time we step together it is a requirement from Him that we say, Lord Holy Spirit, we want to worship. Help us worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Amen. Can we do that right now? Can we just lift our hands and just, med just meditate on Him just for a second? Thank you, Jesus.
Give him another clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful. Uh, you know, thank God we serve a God that's alive. Amen. We cannot see him, but you can experience him. Amen. And uh, to be in his presence together like that, he says he inhabits the praises of his people amen so god is here god is here where we praise him amen, amen. give someone a hug tell him god is here amen, amen. God is 
bless you. Bless the Lord. No oh, one is tiring in Lamise yet today. There you are. Good. We will dedicate the baby today, David Francois. So you can bring him forward. Ms. Uh, Morne and Marike can come forward with them as well as their area. We'll dedicate them. Jesus never sprinkled babies. He held them in his arms and blessed them. Amen. So we do what Jesus did. We do what Jesus did. When we dedicate them, we don't uh, make them members of the church. Uh, they'll have to decide when they grow up. But there's a special blessing on them that they can remember as the child grows up. You can remind God, say, God, I dedicated this child to you. Eh? You can remind God when the child is sick, God, I dedicated this child to you. Or when the child grows up and wants to go astray, he say, Lord, I dedicated that child to you. That gives you leverage in the spirit realm, this dedication. Amen? And also to provide for the child, you can say to God, I dedicated this child to you. Help us and provide for us so we can care for him. Amen? So we just do what Jesus did. Amen? This little one here. Amen. Come, David. How old is he now? Just three months. Three months. Goodness gracious. Say hello, family. Here you are, in church already, eh? So last week they told me you were running late with a baby. So I couldn't see the baby running. I just, three months is a bit young for that. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. Father, we bless this little baby, David, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We dedicate him to you. And uh, we pray that you bless the parents and the family to care for the child and to raise him in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And we give him back blessed to the parents in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here yeah, you are. Yeah. Well, you trained him well. He's well behaved, eh? Okay. Good. Wonder if you're going to teach him to be a mechanic? Up to him, yeah. Up to him. Up to him. Okay. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Tune instruments also. Okay. Good. Another, another musician. Bless God. We wait upon you for your giving, your tithes, and your offerings. And giving towards projects, missions, or taxes that we're busy tackling. And uh, God bless you for your faithfulness. God says he'll open windows of heaven, windows of opportunity for you, so that he can pour out a blessing for you, that there'll be no room to receive it. Amen. Thank you, ushers. We wait upon you. And uh, Beverly is doing the communion today. Thank you, Beverly.
morning, church. Um, Chantal was saying this morning that we are very blessed to just walk into the, in the church free this morning. We have nothing that holds us back t- to serve God. Jesus did it for, for us on the cross. So we give him all the glory. Um, Psalm, turn to Psalm 103 um, from verse 2 to verse 13. I'm going to read. Um, the, my message is the benefits that we have through the blood of Jesus. Um, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives us, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are as high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The mercies of the Lord is everlasting to everlasting. Um, So... We can have confidence in him, that he heals us of all our diseases. It says in the word, by his stripes we are healed. He saved us from destruction. He translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, where we were once far off, but now we have been brought near. He makes us right with God. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are justified by faith. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and we have been justified and sanctified through the blood of Jesus. He is merciful and gracious. His mercies are new every morning, and his grace is sufficient for us. Through his blood, we have forgiveness of sins. He says, their lawless deeds I will remember no more. And he removes the handwriting and requirements that that was against us. So now we can have access by one spirit to the Father. Isn't that wonderful? (laughs) Um, Jesus wanted us to remember that he gave his life for for us. So this morning we're going to remember what he did for us. He took our punishment upon himself so that we can be reconciled to God. He became the sacrifice for us. He canceled our debts and forgave our sins, and healed us from all our sicknesses and diseases. As we partake this morning, let us remember all that Jesus did for us. He gave his life so that we can have peace with God and be made one with him as our sins are forgiven. And, as, and he was raised from the dead so that we can rule and reign in this life and in eternity. His kingdom will never end, and he endures forevermore. So, as we take the bread that represents his body, which was broken for us, and the wine, which represents his blood, the blood of the new covenant, which was shed for many for the forgiveness of sins, let us remember him. And let us draw near to him with with the full assurance that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We are sons and daughters in his house. Jesus made it possible for us. And we enter into it by faith. Um, so I, I, I just want to say thank you to the Lord. Because before I came to know the Lord, I was really dead in my sins, basically. I had a lot of oppression. I was very depressed. I had no hope, no purpose. And Jesus, when I gave my heart to Jesus, before that, I also was very poor. I had my, my bank account was always empty. I always suffered and I was always crying. So when I got saved, the Lord just changed my life. He changed everything. He gave me purpose in the body of Christ. He gave me hope when I was hopeless. And he taught me how to love others more than I love myself. And today I am so blessed. I have so much to be thankful for. I have a beautiful house. 
I've got a good job. I don't feel stressed. I have peace. So the, the Lord has done so much for me. So I want to say that anybody that doesn't serve the Lord, change your change. Serve him because you'll make your life much better than it was before. So I want to thank the Lord for that. Let us partake. Thank you, Father. You sent your son to die for us so that we can come into your presence and have fellowship with you. Forgive us for our shortcomings. And thank you, Jesus, for making a way for us through your blood, which was shed for us, and your blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We give you all the glory and honor, Lord, and as you are our King and our Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus, that we can pray. God's going to do something. He can do the impossible, but we must pray. I was just, um, your testimony is so precious, uh, Beverly. You know, I thank God for my salvation as well. It's just awesome. I just want to share something out of Daniel. I'll just find Daniel. She was saying about that the handwriting, one of the blessings is that the handwriting that was against us was taken away. And uh, I was meditating on Daniel this week, the book of Daniel, the prophet Daniel, and um, I saw something. Uh, <clears throat> Daniel 5 talks about the writing on the wall. What happened there just shortly was Daniel with three other of his uh, young men were taken out of Babylon to, to, um, by Nebuchadnezzar and out of Israel because they besieged the city. And here they found themselves, Israelites who serves the living God in a country where Babylonians were serving false gods. They were serving idols. Are you listening, young people there? Thank you. Put those earphones away or whatever. Um, put the cell phones away unless you make notes on it. Okay, so Daniel was found himself in Babylon. Babylon speaks in the New Testament, you can find it everywhere, as the city that was blessed but then went into sin. So it's called sin, the harlot, it's called uh, Babylon. And great judgment has been uh, given over Babylon, although Babylon had a lot of learning in, in astrology and signs and a lot of wonderful things, literature, they became a very sinful city. And the, the king also he lifted up his, his uh, heart uh, towards God. And there was Daniel found in the, in the Bible. And the Bible says he was full of wisdom and the light of God. He decided in Babylon that he's going to stay faithful to his God, the living God, because they were serving false gods of silver and bronze and, um, yeah, Bel, the, the evil uh, god, the gods that doesn't even have ears, the Bible says. And Daniel, they could find out that Daniel could hear and because God started working. You know, when you're where you are, God will start to work. God started giving a dream to this Nebuchadnezzar and nobody could interpret it except Daniel. Because his, who he was and his characteristics started speaking and so they knew that there's favor of God upon him. And so Daniel was brought before Nebuchadnezzar and at that time Nebuchadnezzar, when his heart was lifted up, God humbled him. But he humbled him in a way that was quite amazing. He went... Um, um, I'll just read further on. Now, Daniel, the Nebuchadnezzar was humbled. He lived like an animal, started eating grass until he made the decision that there's only one living God. And then God set him back up on his throne. And when he died, his son, Balthasar, became king. And I want to speak about Balthasar quickly. Now, Balthasar, when they, uh, when they were when they captured the Israelites and brought them to Babylon, they also took the, the goblets and the, the th precious things out of the temple and took it to Babylon. And Balthasar, now the son, he was having a party and he took those goblets and he put it full of wine and he, with his concubines and all his wives and they, they were drinking from it, but his heart was lifted up in him. And it says it very clearly here. Um, Yeah, sorry, I've, I've actually took another Bible, so now I'm, I don't know exactly where I am in, my, in the different Bible. You know how that feels. Okay. He gave a great banquet. While Balsasa was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and the silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. 
And so they drank, and as they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and stone. And suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall, near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale. I think if you see a hand appearing on a wall and starts writing, I think I will also feel sort of um, a bit weak, won't you? And he was so frightened that his knees knocked together and his legs gave way. The king called out for the enchanters, the astrologers and diviners to be brought and said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck and he will be made the third highest in the ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing. Uh, and they didn't know what it meant. So the king became even more terrified. And his nobles were baffled. And the queen, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles, came into the banqueting hall. O king, live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed. Don't look so pale. There's a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. That's a wise wife. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that, that of the gods. May God give us w women. Give you a wife that remembers and that knows the truth. Amen. King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, I say, appointed him chief of the magicians. This man, Daniel, whom the king called Balthasar, which means was the god of Bel, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles and solve difficult problems. What a wonderful uh, CV. Yeah. But do you know that you and I can have exactly that same CV? Because the Holy Spirit that did this for Daniel, the God's wisdom, he would always say it wasn't me, it was God that gave me the interpretation. We are serving that same God and God's Holy Spirit in Isaiah 11 verse 2 and 3, he says, this is the Spirit of God that rests upon him. And the Holy Spirit that he gives us has got the characteristics of the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge. Do you know where it stands? Isaiah 11, verse 2. You must know that. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding, spirit of uh, the obedient fear of the God, spirit of God, spirit of obedient fear of God, spirit of might, spirit of counsel. Those are the characteristics of the Holy Spirit that when he baptized you with his spirit, that is what you have. I remember when I was young and the Holy Spirit said to me, no, Lord, tap into my resources of wisdom. Tap into my resources of knowledge. Tap into my resources of might. Hallelujah. It's all available for us. So Daniel was brought before the king. He wasn't so familiar with, with Daniel because he says, are you, Daniel, one of the exiles? His father knew Daniel better. I've heard that the spirit of the gods is in you and that you have insight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and Tantus couldn't do it. So if you can read this, he says, I will give you purple and I will give you money and everything. I as ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered the king, you may keep your gifts for yourself. He was not going to be bought. That's a true prophet. A true prophet is not bought. Nevertheless, I will read, uh, keep your rewards, give your rewards for somebody else. Because he knew it was God that gave it to him. O King, the Most High God of your father Nebuchadnezzar, sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, now here he takes and he reminds Balthasar. What happened to his father? You must go and read it in, in chapter 5. He says he had a high position. He was mighty. He promoted anybody he wanted to. He could dispose everyone, anyone. He could strip him of his glory. He had total authority. But he was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal. He says, verse 20, But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped. Hardened with pride. Pride hardens the heart. 
Pride is ever overestimating yourself and underestimating God and everybody else. It's a terrible thing, pride, and it can hide in the, in the heart. So it hardened his heart. Um, he was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal, wild donkeys. He was with the wild donkeys and ate grass like cattle. His body was drenched with dew until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and sets over them anyone he wishes. He had to acknowledge that God is sovereign. But you, his son, Balthasar, you have not humbled yourself. Though, though you knew all this, Daniel says, listen, you knew. And you know what the Lord spoke to me about here was that when, when we are in the world, because now here's Daniel in Babylon. We are in this world. And remember that God loves the world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. But Paul very uh, uh, explicitly says, we are not of this world. When we are in this world, we must remember what God has done. We must remember who we are. We must know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We must remember the stories. We must remember the traditions. Not the wrong traditions, the traditions that's been brought down from generation to generation. The, the principles, the statutes, the ordinances, what we live by. So he forgot. He, Daniel said to him, you knew it. But you did not honor God who holds his hand in your life and all your ways. God holds your hand, your breath. And your ways in his hand. And he wants you to acknowledge him. And he says, you know, God has numbered the days of your reign. Brought to an end. You have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. That was the meaning of those words. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. From then on, that kingdom was finished. But what is he saying here? That handwriting was against Balthasar. What did Jesus come? We all had handwriting against us. We were all sin. We all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Because you remember what Paul says in, in, um, in Acts 11 verse, let me just get it. Acts 11 verse 20. Let me just get it quickly. Ten, ten. Verse 42, it talks about God had already chosen um, Jesus who rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. Jesus Christ is the judge of the living and the dead. Say it with me. Jesus Christ is the judge of the living and the dead. And so here, he judged him. But we've got, in the New Testament, we've got a chance. Through Jesus Christ, remember the law came through Moses and grace came through Christ. We have an opportunity to acknowledge Jesus, to acknowledge what he's done for us, because we all have sinned, and he can, write, he can remove that handwriting against our life. Isn't that fantastic? Every time we repent, God removes that which is stacked against our name. We can walk free from sin. We can walk in liberty, like she said, and God can bless us. So my, the word that um, the Lord laid on my heart is so that we can remember. Remember what God has done for you. And you need to tell your children what God has done so that they can remember it. Amen? When they are in this world and we are in this world, that they will remember that the God of your fathers is the true living God and that he holds your breath and your ways in his hand. Amen? I just want to finish with this. Uh, this morning we shouted, didn't we? 
For those who don't understand praise and worship like it is in the scriptures, there's a shout that went out. Or everywhere in the Bible you see the shout from the beginning of Genesis right through to Revelation. I just want to read you one or two scriptures. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Because the Lord has taken away your punishment and has turned back your enemy. Even the prophet says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation. He comes on a donkey. Let them ever shout for joy. Let the saints shout for joy. Her saints shall shout aloud for joy. The upright shall shout. So if you think we're crazy by shouting, you haven't read your Bible. God bless you. Um, anyone who has a testimony can line up on that side there. Good morning, church. My name's Cynthia. I've got a testimony in that two years ago I bought a fridge, or just over two years ago. And the other day I got red dust blowing into my fridge. So I called a technician to come and fix my fridge. He took it apart and he said, phone defy. This started before the warranty was up because the total inside cooling system was rusted. So I called Defy and the first thing I said was, how much is it going to cost me? They said, well, we've got to take it to the workshop. I don't know, but it shouldn't cost you anything. It comes under the warranty. And that was even after two years of, and my warranty had expired. So I got a new fridge. So I thank the Lord for it. morning. I'm Colleen Robertson and I just want to thank the Lord for his mercy and his kindness. Um, last week, things that the, uh, the debtors haven't been, uh, the, girl, the, credit, the debtors haven't been paying us and they haven't had, they haven't had resources either to pay us. And in the week, I was in a state, and I said, Lord, I just need your Holy Spirit just to hug me today and make me feel it's all right. And I was traveling from Belleville, and I saw a truck in front of me, and it had Jesus on it, and it said, trust in the Lord, trust in God. And it was all shiny bright, and the world underneath was dark. And I just, that was just wow. And then I went and bought veggies, and... The lady behind the counter just streamed with love. And I said to her afterwards, and she was so kind and nice to me. And I said to her, are you a Christian? And she said, yes. And she gets a lot of hate. But I said, it's, oh, it's just so wonderful. And then um, I was with Nola on Thursday, and then we prophet Nola, and then we were praying. And the money came through, so the debit orders were covered. So I just praise the Lord and say thank you to the Lord for his mercy. Uh, beloved, I wanna, my name is Chitta. I just want to share how the Lord saved my life from a certain death. And uh, I'm a tour guide and I was in St. Lucia. And St. Lucia is renowned for hippo, hippos or hipp hippopotamuses walking around. And uh, I like jogging as well. And, uh, but when it's dark, I don't jog or I jog down a certain road there. That's parallel to the main road, and the main road is busy. So, And I went jogging down, and it was just about 400 meters down the road, and I saw what, what's, what's there? Two cars shining their lights at two hippos grazing on the grass there. So I thought, I was about 400 meters away. I said, no, no, let me straight turn away. No jogging tonight. I'm going straight back to my hotel room. 
But when I got to the hotel, I liked swimming, and I thought, yeah, let me just quickly go for a dive in the swimming pool where I've been many times. And as I walked into the swimming pool area, I was still thinking, where shall I put my clothes, there or there? And as I walked across, and I want to put my clothes there where I normally put it, two meters from me, I saw a hippo. And, yeah, I don't know how I turned around. It was just grace of the Lord. And uh, I was like lightning back into the reception area. And, yeah, the guys were laughing at me. But, you know, if, if a hippo gives you one bite, you're gone. And, and I just want to testify the Lord saved my life that night by being two meters from this very, very dangerous. It's known as the animal killing the most, most people in, Soda in, in, in Africa. So praise his name. Good morning, church. Um, my name's Andrew. I normally sit in the corner over there for a very good reason. Um, my wife normally sends us messages or verses every morning. And on this specific morning was quite a, a real eye-opener for me. Um, it's Isaiah 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the fire or the flame scorch you. Sure, um, this was pretty rough for me. On Wednesday last week, we had an armed robbery. Six armed men came in with firearms and hammers and was to clear us out. But with uh, God's grace, divine timing, and giving me the strength, supernatural strength. I single-handedly got them out forcefully without anybody getting injured or hurt. So I would like to give God the glory of this divine protection and timing. So if you don't believe, <laughs> read Isaiah 43 verse 2. <laughs> that, that makes your eyes open up. So thank you, Lord. can't top that. Morning, everybody. I just want to thank the Lord because um, Tuesday and Wednesday I was really feeling not very well. But I went to household on Wednesday evening and um, Jasmine actually asked me, is there something wrong? So I said, yes, I'm not feeling too well. So after household, the meeting and everything, um, they prayed for me and... I really, by the time I got home, I had already started to feel better. When I woke up in the morning, I was completely healed. There was absolutely nothing wrong with me. Yeah, thank God for all those testimonies. Amen. Our lives are precious in His sight. And uh, only God can really protect us. Okay, Romans 8, verse 28 and 29. Well known scripture. My dad had that scripture up in our house all our lives, so I know it off by heart. Verse 28. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And uh, then he describes the purpose, you know, that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of his own son. <coughs> Everything 
works together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Things working together, the Greek word is sunergeo, S-U-N-E-R-G-E-O, and it means to partner in labor, to exert power to assist. And we get our word synergy from it, working together. We have synergy forms that we want our area leaders and our UMSA leaders and pastors from other churches to fill in as proof that we are working together, synergio. And uh, it's important where people can work together. But he says, everything in life, if you love God and you know you're called according to his purpose, everything. How, much is it, how many things are everything? Alles. Afrikaans is beter, says Engels. Engels say everything, Afrikaans say alles. Something. Okay. And it uh, works together for good. It's very hard to believe. But we have to confess it. And believe it and trust it. Because things we don't like, we can't believe that it can work together for our good. Very difficult. My dad preached on this verse uh, over the radio, Lorenzo Marx, in those days. We weren't allowed to preach on the Afrikaans radio because we were Pentecostal. Only the Dutch Reformed were allowed. Uh, what people don't realize, this was a religious state, not a police state. It was controlled by the Dutch Reformed Church. And the Pentecostals were cut off. But my dad and other ministers found a way to preach over the radio by preaching over Lorenzo Marx, the Ondes Curtis, that is uh, the shortwave radio, the medius and medium wave touch and the cabbage <laughs> and <laughs> hey? you could hear the Beatles over Lorenzo Marx but not over South African radio because they were communists <laughs> <laughs> their hair was long <laughs> <laughs> the evil songs they sang I want to hold your hand Yeah, they were banned. Anyway, uh, the purpose, prothesis, prothesis, Greek, um, it means to be on display, like the 12 loaves of showbread displaying that there were 12 tribes of Israel. It became God's showpiece to the world of his constant provision for the 12 tribes because of his presence. And he reminded the 12 tribes by the 12 showbread that was in the Holy of Holies of their dependence on God for spiritual and physical needs. So the purpose of God here that should remind us of our dependence on him and that he can provide all our spiritual and physical needs <laughs> is that we can have some water, please. That, that um, we are, uh, conf we need to be conformed to his image. Conformed to his image. That's the purpose we need to be reminded of. It will keep us dependent on him because we cannot do it by ourselves. So once you are approved of God because you believe in his son, he says everything starts working together for your good. So my dad preached over the radio one night and he preached on this verse, everything works together for good. And then we went on holiday. We w normally went to Durban to the Cairn Hope Hotel. There's no hotel like that anymore, but we always went there. 
It's now the Beach Hotel, in the Marine Parade. And uh, one morning when we got up, my dad's car was stolen. With the, you know, the spare wheel and the jack and all his tools and things. And he was so upset early in the morning, he said to God, why did you allow this to happen? You know, I'm your servant, we're on holiday, how are we going to get home? And the Holy Spirit reminded him, said, what did you preach the other day on the radio? He said, I preach all things work together for good, but this is not working together for my good. <laughs> is that Beatrice back there? How are you, Beatrice? You're good. Como está? Muito bem. Muito bom. Okay, it's good to see you. A wonderful testimony Beatrice has. Yeah. And so uh, the Holy Spirit says, well, then it will work together for good. My dad says, I don't know how, but I'll believe it. So he phoned my uncle. He said, you know, you'll have to come and fetch us. My car's been stolen. But my dad first prayed. He says, okay, God, if it's going to work together for good, I want a newer car. It must be green. My dad loved green. And they stole all my tools, so I want tools in the boot as well. And a spare wheel and jack and so on. So he phoned my uncle. He said, you must please come and fetch us in five days' time. We'll just walk around there for the rest of the week because my car has been stolen. And my uncle said, funny you should say that because I just spoke to Auntie Doreen and Neville. Their father is now living with them because the mother died. And he's a new rambler. Is in their garage. He's not using it. He wants to sell it. Do you want it? My dad said, what color is it? <laughs> he says, green. <laughs> and, and then he said, okay, we'll buy it. So he was very happy. My uncle drove down with a new Rambler. First thing my dad did was to open the boot. And there was a toolbox in it with more tools than he had. Yeah. And a spare wheel and a jack. And so he says, this is my car. And it was a wonderful car. And so he drove back with my uncle and our family, all smiles, saying, everything works together. <laughs> so he put that up in our house. Wherever we moved, my dad never stayed longer in a place than three or four years. Then he's preached all his sermons, then he moves to the next church. <laughs> I've got all his sermons, so I know. I inherited it. The few days after he passed away, on the 12th of December, 1989, I had a dream that I found a treasure Kist. Kist? Chest? Chest. And uh, I opened it and it was full of jewels and precious stones. I thought, that's wonderful. Where is this thing? <laughs> and the next morning, my mother phoned. She says, I've got something here. She's cleaned out my father's cupboard and everything. She says, I've got something here for you that I think he wants you to have. So I thought, this is the treasure chest. So immediately I drove over there, got there, and she gave me all his sermons. So that's my treasure chest, all his sermons. But anyway, so that became a, a slogan in our family. When anything happens, we say, well, we don't know how, but it will work together for our good. Because we love God. And we understand His purpose. So let's see. 
Now, many things happen to us that we don't like. How many people have things sometimes happen to them that they don't like? And then what is your reaction? Things happen to your children that you don't like. What is your reaction? No. That's not true. <laughs> we need to say all things work together. If we believe it. But we normally emphasize the evil and what's wrong to agree with it rather than to agree with God's word that says he can turn this thing around for us. No amens in the church today, but that's the truth. So once you've been approved of God, everything works together for you good, even your distresses. Now it's very quiet in this church. This is a reformed church that's become quiet. The word uh, distress is stenokoria. Stenokoria, S T E N O O. It's, a, it's an R, sterokoria. A narrow place like uh, a drukgang, what is that? Where you, you push the sheep through. Dire straits, you know, you have to, you can't turn left or right, you just have to go through. It's what distresses me. Paul says, you know, the, in Romans 8 verse 36, we are killed all day. And yet, we are not destroyed because nothing will separate us from the love of God. Amen. He's liberated us. We heard, yeah, from Beverly, from the bondage of sin. And we are, me, we are being made dead in relation to the world by faith in Jesus Christ. Nola in the car this morning said, you know, what should we say about all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 31. Amen. God is for us, who can be against us? And then he goes through that long list. Maybe we should read it together. There, Romans. He says, he qualifies uh, the statement he made. It says, um, verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God, Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor demonic powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, 
which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Then next verse is, I tell you the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. I'm bearing this witness in the Holy Spirit. Incredible. If nothing can separate you from the love of God except yourself, you decide to leave God as your decision. So, to be approved is dokinos, dokinos, D-O-K-I-N-O-S. It means to be put to test for the purpose of approving. Sometimes God tests us to see if he can approve of us. We share in the suffering and the glory of Christ because we are sons and daughters of God led by the Spirit. And by the Spirit, we put to death the old sinful and selfish nature. God is looking for people that will meet his specifications. Chantal saying we lay down our lives. God wants us to be chosen workmen that have been tested and approved. Someone who chooses to submit himself to the test before he meets the specifications and wins the approval. 2 Timothy 2.15 says you must study the word of God that you might show yourself to be a workman not having to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth. When your work is inspected, no one needs to be ashamed. Amen? So, in order to reach those demands or specifications, the word is given to us for our instruction, for our correction, to restore us to the upright state and the scripture is given to reprove us, rebuke, etekcho, etekcho, E-T-E-G-C-H-O, etekcho, with such effect that truth will bring conviction of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. But the rebellious, the self-centered ones cannot reap these benefits because they don't want to conform to the image of his dear son. Everything doesn't work together for good. You must prove that you love God by keeping his word, by doing his word. So God's plan for you is that he's ordained you, he's called you, He's justified you and he's ready to glorify you, but he awaits your response. Amen? Then everything will work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Even things we don't understand, God works together for good. When the devil thought he destroyed Jesus, it worked together for good because then he became our savior. So even that worked together for good on the cross. Amen? Was his worst defeat, was his greatest victory. And things we think destroying us, God turns it around so it will be our greatest testimony. Amen? In our personal lives, in our families, in our church, the devil is constantly trying to kill us, to destroy us, attack us. But you know what? It's going to work towards our good. Amen? We must believe it, confess it, and that should be our first reaction. Not a desperation, but a confidence that it's going to work towards our good. Amen?
So everyone say with me, say, everything works together for good. For those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So the thing is to accept God's purpose that He wants to uh, conform you to the image of His Son. Whichever way He decides to do that. So sometimes there will be correction or reproval or even rebuke. But it's necessary to conform you to the image of His Son. And <coughs> to love God, He says you must keep His word. Keep His word. Do what He tells you. Praise God. Amen. Who's got pain in the back of the head? It's like pressure on your eyes too, but the, the, the headache in the back of the head and uh, earache. Earache, been for a while. Okay, you want to pray for sore throats. Sore throat, anybody? When you swallow a sore and uh, pain in the chest, especially when you sleep at night, when you lie down. Pain in the chest, chestal area, yeah. Who's got those pains? I pray for you too. Any pains in the chest? When you breathe or there? Okay. And I want to pray for a hip, left hip that's sore. Pray for someone with digestion problems in the intestines, muscular pain in the upper leg. He's uh, got a swollen ankle, I think it's a left ankle. Okay. Pain in the arch of the right foot. Don't know. Yeah. And here's a little word that might encourage you. If you're looking for direction. But don't make a decision until God confirms things for you. Wait for God to confirm things. It might take some time, but He could confirm it within three days. And then you know you're making the right decision. Don't just make a decision out of pressure. Amen? Good. Let all those people come forward and we'll pray for them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can the workers come and help me pray, please?
the song okay let's stand we sing together before we go God bless you grace and peace to you amen okay Have a wonderful Sunday.